This is a tutorial on using the list of created variables. Once permanent variables are created in SDA using Recode or Compute, you can see them from the List Created Variables tab. In this tutorial, we'll demonstrate how to take advantage of this list for your analysis needs. Now when you click on the List Created Variables tab, you're likely to see pages of unfamiliar variables if you don't have a private workspace and happen to be working on a popular public data set like the GSS Cumulative data file. This is because all the variables created by everyone using the data set are gathered in one public space and listed here. Now, private workspaces are a new feature of SDA version 4. Archives can create private workspaces for individuals or groups when setting up a data set. That feature, however, is a separate topic and won't be covered here. So for SDA users who don't belong to a private user group and have to share the public space containing hundreds or thousands of created variables, how do you find your variables? Let's look at a couple of methods to nail down your own variables and demonstrate how you can incorporate them into your analysis. Let's look at the variable list more closely. The list is broken up into pages, and if we click on the right-hand icon, that will take us to the last page. You can see that this list has 14 pages, and each page, except for the last one, has 100 variables. So we can see that there are over 1,300 variables in this list. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Okay, now we know the size of our problem here. We're trying to find variables in a list of over 1,300. Um, let's look a little more closely here. We can see that there are columns for name, label, and date created for the variable. Next to each of these columns, there are little up and down arrows. When you click on these, they sort this column in ascending or descending order. Over here, there's an actions column for each variable. And for each variable, you have the option to select that variable, view it, or delete it. Finally, there are little text boxes under the name, label, and date created columns. And those text boxes act as filters to let us narrow down the list of variables. Okay, let's try using these features. Let's say that some time ago I created a variable that has to do with work status. And I don't remember exactly what the name of that variable was called. All I remember is that it had stat in the name. So let's go over to the name column and just type in stat. And that narrows down our list to all variables that have stat somewhere in the variable name. Now it turns out there are only two variables in this entire list that have stat in their name. And looking at this, I can see, oh yeah, work stat 2 is the variable I created. And if I want to just double check that, I can click on the view button and see a description of the variable. I can look at the recode map that was used. I can look at a frequency distribution. And I can see that, yes, indeed, this breaks down work status into just two categories, working or not working. That's the variable I created, and that's the one I want to use. So I can dismiss the window. I can now select that variable comes over here to the selected box. And now I can go to analysis. And I can use this variable in tables. Say I want to put it in the row place over here. Just click on row. It'll copy it over. And say I want to look at my work stat 2 by race. I can just type in race, because I know that variable exists. I can run the table. 
And there I've created a table of my workstat2 by race. Okay, let's go back. Say now I want to look at workstat2 by age, but I don't want to use the original age variable, which just which just lists all the ages of all the respondents. I want to look at age broken up into smaller groups. Now I could create my own age recode, but since age is such a popular variable, I suspect that it's been used by other people to create age recodes. So let's just go back here and let's type in age for my filter and see what variables that other folks have created that have age in the name. There's a lot of them. So let's try something else. Let's see. Let's go over here to date created and look for the most recently created variables that have age. Let's see. That's the oldest one. Let's, let's click this again. And now we have the newest ones listed first. Let's just look at these names. Age age groups. Let's see what that is. Oh, that might not be bad. Although there's only three groups. Let's look for something that has a little more detail. Age 4C, maybe that's four categories. Let's look at that one. Yeah, that has a little more detail in it. Let's try that one. We can see that the recode map and we can see a frequency distribution. This looks like it might be a good variable for us to use. So I'll get rid of this window and I will select this variable, which puts it over here in the selected box. I'll go back to analysis. Now I want to replace race with age 4C. So I'll just click on column and it will move over here. And now I'll run the table again. And now I have my workstat2 broken down by the age recode, age 4C. OK, let's go back to the list. OK, let's just look at a couple other points about the variable list. First, there's a little help using list link here. If you click on this, you can see there's a little reminder of the features of the list and how to use them. If you just need a quick refresher on how to use the list, this could be helpful. And also, there's a button update list. In general, you only need to click this button if you think someone else may have created new variables after you landed on this list created variables opening page. The variables you created throughout your session will be automatically added into the list. So you'll always be able to find them right away. And you might just use this if you um, have been working with this list in various ways and you just want to go back to the starting point. Okay, this has been a tutorial on using the list of created variables.